throughout the year in 2021, I, I spent a good amount of time covering highly on holdings. It was a pleasure to do so. It was really one of those companies that um, when it came forward with the idea and the um, the concept of, of revolutionizing the class eight vehicle space and um, looking to add um, uh, more options really out there uh, other than what is the underutilized option for CNG and the dominant option for uh, for diesels for fleets. And I, I think we're at an impasse here in history where companies, big companies are starting to buy into uh, the idea, whether or not they go with a Tesla product or a Nikola product or, you know, uh, Hyzon's uh, doing some really good things abroad. Um, and, and Hylion is, is really, with that pack, um, all of the companies are, are very different in their application. Um, and in my covering of Hylion, it really the my, my bullish thesis is surrounded around its um, its capital lean uh, business structure, in that they're not trying to reinvent the the world here. I've seen a number of different uh, photos um, with the Hylion uh, system, whether it be the EX solution or the Hypertruck ERX, um, which is going to run uh, from Peterbilt the OEM, but um, a lot of different uh, EXs on a lot of different chassis, Freightliner, Volvo, Penta, across, they are um, really just uh, able to be um, uh, installed using all the OEMs, but I thought it'd be prudent to come up with my uh, opinions and, and assessment of 2021. Um, there has been no shortage of scrutiny on this specific company, um, where they're at, uh, pre-revenue, therefore you can't touch it. I beg to differ. I do. Um, this is a game that you need to acknowledge. If you, if you if you want to value invest, go ahead and do that. This is not. This is not value investing. And there are certain schools of thought that would put highly on in a category of industrial technology. I agree with that. I, I think um, as of late here, we've had uh, a few insights of visit the highly on uh, facility and, and talk about how state of the art the facility is. I've, I've heard this a uh, few times over. Um, and it's impressive. It speaks to the use case of the Hylion uh, system, especially the battery management system, which was one of the announcements of many in 2021 that were uh, extremely bullish. A charge time of eight minutes, you know, stock popped close to $20 uh, on that news, uh, only to digress over time here and, and uh, to be overshadowed by being out of favor really for um, the majority of 2021. It was a dismal year, stock sentiment. I don't uh, think can go any lower. Um, when anybody says that in the market, usually you're proven wrong, but I actually think we're probably putting in a very, very long base here um, with uh, six as the, the floor. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, wonderful. <laughs> There's nothing really that's going to solve the stock sentiment um, uh, then uh, highly on stepping forward and doing some of the things that they said that they would do on the onset um, to, to revolutionize and be a leader in, in class eight electrification. Uh, to do that, they need to make sales. So it, it is really all talk until then. And I know they're doing everything that they can possibly do to march toward that end. Um, but I think they and all shareholders and everybody that are involved with and following this story understand how important it is to uh, drive that sentiment uh, somewhere other than uh, where it's been in 21, 2021. And, and that's the sentiment is extremely negative, extremely bearish on the space. You know, we've had fits and starts there with infrastructure coming through. You know, the push for EV just can't come quick enough. Um, and then the supply chain shortage as well. And, and not only that, but the entire SPAC space and the EV space, whether it be got hammered uh, for reasons that were justified and potentially being targets for shorts um, to put on some heavy short positions and, and really drive these companies down um, really just didn't make it easy at, at all in 2021. It was a dismal year. Uh, stock sentiment was pretty poor. So the first thing, you know, in 2021 review uh, was just that. I, I, I think Hylion, from my perspective, gets gets a no score. I mean, if you want me to score it a zero out of, out of 10, um, I, I can. But as far as stock performance, I can provide no credit whatsoever for the dismal performance this year. It's just been absolutely atrocious. Um, and I, I don't know if the company came to public markets too early. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they could have avoided this train wreck. I don't know if they forecasted this train wreck. I don't know if they offloaded shares 
because they knew the company was going down. It seems like most of the executives that have offloaded some shares uh, have done so around the $10 mark or below anyway. Um, of note, Thomas Healy, the CEO, liquidated a lot of shares in 2021 on a pre, uh, pre-assigned or pre-scheduled type of a, of a, of a process. And and I was okay with that. And it didn't bother me as much as it bothered a lot of people out there. Um, I, I thought being that it was pre-planned um, actually kind of reduced some of the scrutiny that he may have received had he, you know, unloaded shares or, or was able to unload some shares at the higher price. You, you notice how a lot of the share liquidations um, sales took place with the stock pretty recessed. So um, stock sentiment, really, really poor. Now I'll talk about going into 2022, what we need to do to kind of improve upon that. Um, the second is, is the order book continues to grow and it has grown in 2021. Um, I thought this was a positive, um, not only from public companies, but non-public companies like Detmar, who's, who's really kind of an, an amazing advocate for Hylian. And I tell you what, the value proposition of acknowledging how important it is um, in, in what they're doing in the frac sands business um, down there and, and running the EX solution, um, got their order in for 300 additional hyper truck ERXs. Going to be a lot of fun to see um, some of these orders and, and how highly on deals uh, with this backlog now, which is what it is. It's a backlog of an order book. Um, I've said many, many times, I think over the next 2022, look, if they can't make sales until the supply chain really shakes out and gets a, a better indication that they can uh, really start to expand and deliver this product that needs time for validation anyway, um, could really be a blessing in disguise. I, I know there's a lot of stock owners out there that don't want me to say that, but you know, is highly unprepared for a 10,000 order from Amazon? The answer is no, it's going to go backlogged anyway. So I think it's in highly best interest to get this product as fine tuned and as perfect as it possibly can be for the time to ramp up. In the meantime, what they can do is that they can backlog these orders. And I'd like to see multiple thousand Hypertruck ERX 500s, the 250s. Um, I liked the Monet order of 40, you know, it, it just for each of these fleets, that are putting these uh, placeholders in the line for the Hypertruck ERX. It, it's, it's one strategic look at each of these companies. And Hylion will, of course, sit down with each of these companies and understand what out of those um, uh, uh, committed orders or uh, uh, pledged orders uh, do they want to put final and go ahead and start in their uh, fleet rotation. In other words, are they going to take delivery or, or agree upon delivery of five, 10 trucks on the onset uh, with multiple orders uh, being backlogged into future years um, so that all of the fleets can have a, a nice shot at that initial uh, integration into the rotation of their, uh, their fleets as they're looking to rotate out the older trucks and replace some of those uh, and start the data collection on the electrified powertrain the Hylion brings to the table and, and start those uh, uh, cross comparisons themselves because th there will be. Um, there will be internal scrutiny. Um, each and every one of these units that are sold to each of these fleets are going to be uh, a, a data driven um, type of initiative on each of these companies. I don't care how big or how small. Um, each and every one of them are going to track, you know, the, the, the amount saved potentially on the fuel side, the amount saved on the payload uh, side, the ease of drivership, a lot of different uh, topics when you're looking to evaluate this product when it gets integrated. Are they all going to be good? I hope so. Um, but there's going to be a multi-point type of uh, evaluation once these um, uh, Hypertruck ERXs are introduced to the fleets. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see those um, those 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 validated, right? Can they um, carry more payload? Can they make that thousand miles plus of range? Is it a better truck to drive? Are there benefits to not having uh, so many mechanics? Uh, in, in other words, a transmission to maintenance, you know, oil changes to make, a diesel uh, fuel cost, etc. And, and down the line, as those costs are being evaluated to the bottom line, once they're integrated into the fleet, then they can really make that educated call for follow-on orders um, into the future and look to really build up and say, you know what, we could see our entire fleet 
going full electrification. Evidently, Matt Detmore has already seen enough to say, look, I want my entire fleet electrified. And that that is the goal that we're looking to get to, to say, look, you know, a, a, a fleet like an Amazon could say, look, I, we, we want a goal by 2027 to say we want 50% of our fleet electrified. Well, Hylion can step in and make that a reality. But until they get that product verified, 2022 is going to be a touch and go year uh, for sure. I'd love to see a couple bits of appreciation just to get the stock price uh, to a respectable level, because right now it's just not, it's not even respectable. I mean, they're being laughed off in so far as the technology isn't going to sell. It's not going to be integrated. Somehow, all these other companies are just going to dominate the world. And, and, and this company is going to go by the wayside. Um, I think that's contrary to everything that I've done on my deep dive and understanding what Hylian brings to the table. Um, and, and I think it's uh, really an oversight if, if that's the perspective um, to not put any type of value in the prospects of the company going forward. 2021 saw the team expanding uh, highly on a lot of uh, high profile board of directors additions. A lot of people think that this is no big deal. I beg to differ. Okay. Until we have a product that is tried and true, verified, ready to go, ready to, um, to break down and put into assembly line style and make sure that the, the product is really perfect. Um, those connections cannot be leveraged. And once they are leveraged, that's going to be the key right there. Um, when those directors who know people and they're brought on these boards of director for their, uh, their connections uh, and their guidance and their experience in their respected industries. And I, you read the dossier on uh, these boards of, of directors and it's fantastic. Uh, Gostansky, um, Elaine Chow, uh, and many others, really impressive. They've done a great job in 2021 in building out um, not only their executive team, but their, their board of governance as well. It's been really fun to watch. Um, and, and these will pay dividends down the line. These are small strategic pieces that um, in a day, the stock pops a little bit. You know, when Elaine Chow was added to the board, the stock popped only to digress back, you know, uh, lower than uh, uh, levels that had previously seen. I mean, the stock's at all time low right now. So any type of good news that has come out in 2021 has been uh, discounted in the eyes of the market. And um, if that's fair in the short term, no problem. Um, the question you need to ask yourself is whether or not that's fair over the long term and whether or not these folks have the ability to step in and, and, and offer their strategic vision at those right times in, in the company's evolution, um, which it's very, very new. But those people are going to pay off in the long run as they are leaned against um, when making critical decisions about the strategic direction of the company. I think it's going to be fun to watch. Um, 2021 was the year that the hybrid EX was uh, finalized. Million uh, miles of road validation, many different um, you know pockets of validation. The Northwest uh, validation comes to my mind. You know, Detmar and what they're doing strategically actually provides me uh, a ton of different validation, and that they are running the trucks and they love them. Uh, it, it does provide everything that they needed, um, the, the improved uh, EX version. So they were able to leverage that time that they put into the product to make sure that it was, it was a better product than initially uh, what they came to market with. The idea was wonderful, but they needed to clean up some of the install uh, things, the ease of install. They've done that. Um, so that product is finalized. And, and I would love to see on the Q4 report here uh, a little bit more in depth on the EX and, and not an admission to just rolling over and allowing Cummins to dominate them. There's no reason to do that. You, you have to show strength in the product that you've devoted this much time and effort and research and development to uh, bring to market. I, I, don't, I don't see how the hybrid EX product, to be honest with you, um, is a direct competition to the Cummins uh, CNG engine. I just don't see it. Now, if you want to make the argument that the additional 120 horsepower that the hybrid EX uh, on the CNG side was aimed at supplementing, uh, certainly I, 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 would, I would hear that out but the difference is that you have to buy an entire unit from Cummins as opposed to take an existing vehicle, whether it be an existing or a new, uh, and just add that uh, extender, or in this case, the horsepower uh, improvement to it through the CNG Hybrid EX, and it works wonderful. 
So I, I don't even fail to see how the how the, the competition is really there. And especially when the C and G engine is only aimed at 10% of the total overall market. If 90% of the total overall fleet is running diesel anyway, wouldn't it be beneficial to actually look at that hybrid EX product as a game changer for those existing fleets and even new fleets that have seen how awesome those uh, EX uh, hybrids are um, in, in going full uh, um, uh, natural gas and being able to either go full natural gas or uh, to supplement with the um, the cost savings on the diesel side um, by adding that that hybrid ex to that 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 product and I, I i i just have a hard time understanding why we keep doubling down on this i've heard thomas healy talk about it twice now um, and and i wish he would focus a little bit more on how you know that that product it does have its place in the market um, whether or not it's accepted in the market is yet to be seen, but uh, I'd really like to see a surprise to the upside of the, on the hybrid EX, which was finalized in 2021. Something that was uh, again, discounted by the markets, the zero emissions credits and the 75 miles of BEV, these were released at the same time when they talked about the different versions of the Hypertruck ERX and putting them into strategic applications, uh, specifically California and the New York markets that are having to accommodate for uh, the inner city driving use and the strict emissions guidelines in that they're um, wanting these trucks to be able to go full electric. And that 75 miles of range will allow them to qualify for uh, the zero emissions credits. I thought this was huge, again, to be discounted by the markets. I said this a lot in 2021, um, it just to really, really double down on the disconnect between the, um, the company and the announcements that they were making. I thought they were firing on a lot of cylinders. I thought they tailed off at the end of the year for whatever reason. I thought they entered into kind of a dry spell a little bit, doing a little bit more outreach through the roadshow. Um, that's totally understandable. But I, I think in 2021, I think that was a positive as well to get to that point where they had the hi, uh, Hypertruck ERX ready to showcase, and they have been um, through their demo units. It's really nice. They had four more demo units that looked like delivered toward the tail end of the year. Few late deliveries, uh, four in point to Detmar Logistics for uh, the uh, Hybrid EX. So both of the products are slowly gaining traction here. I think in 2021, there would have been no way uh, for them to, to, to finalize and get to a point to really be excited about um, because all of this groundwork and all of this preliminary uh, verification of the products is absolutely necessary before the company takes that next step uh, into the mass scale up and integration into the fleets out there. Um, but I thought the last thing for 2021 in summary uh, was the outreach. Uh, there was a few um, uh, councils uh, that were sat uh, by Thomas Ely and Sherry Baker, uh, the CFO of Hylion, they were all very good at trying to get the word out uh, to the company to say, hey, look, we're a player in this space as well. I thought they did a great job of doing that. Their public outreach, as far as that goes, the forums, the expos, the ACT expo, um, some of the investor conferences, I, I thought those were fantastic. I thought they did everything they needed to do to say, hey, here we are. You know, I just think they're in a bit of a quandary right now, a little bit of a flux period right now. And that's why I chalk up 2022 as being kind of a critical year and acknowledging that, you know, they're going to need to bridge the gap to those first initial sales, at least that hint that there is going to be some real demand, some real demand. Where that real demand puts the stock price is going to be anybody's guess. Um, the stock market is going to throw fits on this company if, if they start to place hundreds of orders back to back to back, multiple co uh, companies, companies that could not be foreseen um, on the onset or into the start of 2022. Those are gonna be some of the catalysts that are really gonna take hold. Some of the additional catalysts could be larger uh, whale investors, not institutions representing indexes, stepping into the company and making huge share purchases 
um, in, in these companies, just like uh, as of late, Hyzon has enjoyed. Um, those are going to be some of the catalysts as well that, 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 that could accelerate the, the stock. But in 2022, looking forward here, the first thing I'm looking forward to um, is the February Q4 earnings uh, report. Um, I'm, I'm overdue, quite frankly, and I speak on behalf of uh, most of the investors out there. I, I don't know if the institutions would really care to hear my opinion or not, but I know that there's a pretty good uh, sample size of retail investors that do enjoy my commentary on this topic. And we are chomping at the bit here to see some proof because putting a donut in the revenue category for this many quarters, uh, even though it was forecasted, uh, it was um, to be expected, certainly. Um, I think the last Q3, I think there was some, maybe some false impressions that um, Q3 latter half of the year would actually mean that the uh, revenue was recognized on the Q3 report and it just wasn't. Um, there was some accounts receivable, um, obviously that showed up there on the balance sheet that um, maybe hinted to some of the uh, either some old or new hybrid orders, um, whether it be the new EX system, you know, 380,000, I think is what hit the books on the Q3. I would love to see improvement on that category and then actually realize some of that revenue. Um, I, I do come back to Sherry Baker's point about um, earnings all the way into uh, 2022. Uh, being immaterial. So I, I, my expectations are very low, um, very low. And if there's any catalyst at all on the Q4, um, I'm, I'm ripe to surprise because um, I'm not expecting anything. I, I don't expect that Q4 is going to somehow speak positively about what has been a very, very dismal year for the company. Um, it's been atrocious. It's been horrendous. Like I said, I gave them a zero uh, on the stock score. Um, as far as the company goes, Fantastic um, strides on all on all facets, um, improving on multiple categories. You cannot expect that this company is going to go from one billion to ten billion overnight. It's just not going to happen. I think what you need to look at is the deeper potential for the company um, to 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 really start to cash in on some of these catalysts that they have: product, team, um, addressable market, right. Um, 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 Hypertruck Innovation Council, right? I, they're doing it right on all fronts. And these are big fronts. Each and every one of these categories, they're huge. Um, and, and every now and then they'll put in a, a small little um, uh, taster of progress in each one of these categories. It's just that uh, through 2022 and going into 23 and 24, these pieces are going to have to really start to get, come together and gel uh, into a lot more of an efficient machine here with Hylion and the stock will follow. Um, there, there won't be any type of uh, uh, anything left really to hang their hat on with Hylion to say, look, if they're going to continue to make no sales, um, then the stock is worth, well, zero. Let's just drive it into the ground and hopefully they shut their doors and, and, and fire everybody um, and they sell off the hypertruck ERXs that they have to Tesla uh, and everybody goes home. And that was a, a great three years of effort. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening at all. And the Q4, I'm going to be monitoring uh, for whatever revenue they're able to um, to, to provide, whether or not it's 150,000 bucks. I mean, you know, I, I, I can't imagine that, that half of those accounts receivable uh, aren't going to come in way of payment. Um, you know, I, I'd be hot on the phone to try to get those accounts receivable at least 50% paid up so I could at least um, uh, report some uh, bottom line uh, earnings on the Q4 uh, report. We'll see how it, it happens. Uh, like I said, uh, my hopes are super low. As a matter of fact, my, soup, my hopes uh, on the stock right now are just about as beat down as they can possibly be. Um, so when that typically happens, the only uh, direction that you can head is, is, is up. And, and that's what I'm hoping for is to see some of these catalysts or a collection of catalysts through 2022 give us enough to bridge us into that, um, uh, that scale up, which is the direction that we all know that we're marching in and will inevitably be there at some point in the future. And we're close. We are. If we're a matter of 12 months um, with supply chain issues, no problem. 
it is what it is. There's, there's nothing you can do to speed up the process. Um, and you just have to wait until um, that uh, finalization and verification of the product is, is, is complete. And Highly On feels 100% confident before um, they start to ramp up and introduce these into the fleets um, that, the, that, the, that the problems that can be foresaw uh, could, could have been potentially prevented and mitigated during the validation stage that they're in uh, right now. Uh, the number two thing I'm going to be watching into 2022 is going to be the subscription-based monitoring, something that does not get talked about at all. Subscription-based businesses are fantastic, and Hylion has one. They sure do. Um, and they don't talk about it a lot either, in that a lot of fleets have been... Um, have been really quick to acknowledge how knowledgeable the Hylion staff is with regard to their trucks. Um, in some cases that they know more about the trucks than the companies that own the trucks. And I think that speaks to a, another sub market here um, in that what if through preventative monitoring, Hylion could forecast potentially when the new batteries needed to go in, um, when certain components on the uh, solutions needed to be changed out. Wouldn't that take a lot of the uh, logistics piece off of these um, companies that are shipping goods and, and to be taken on by Hylion through a subscription-based mono, mo, um, monitoring system, if in fact they're running the Hylion solution anyway, the software engineers are the perfect ones to be familiar with the onboard uh, systems, the data that's being stored in the cloud, how to extrapolate that data, how, how really to provide that as a presentation back to the companies themselves as to, hey, we recommend that this particular product is in the yellow. It's just a, 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 a warning. Um, you know, it'll, it'll enter into uh, the red and, and then you'll have kind of a critical stage where it needs to be changed out. Otherwise you could have uh, problems that, you know, we're trying to prevent uh, and, and avoid that downtime. I really think the subscription-based model is gonna be huge. And I remember the CEO of Dana Logistics uh, many years ago, actually a couple, even before um, the SPAC, uh, it became public as a SPAC, um, talked about the real value in Hylion actually being this element uh, of the business itself and be just awesome uh, to be able to provide that as a service to these fleets and, and really integrate. If there's some level of pedigree that I've taken from Hylion, it seems that they're really looking to uh, establish themselves with their customers and not just sell them a product and then forget them. Well, the onboard monitoring system allows them to do that. It allows them to partner with, for a lack of better terms, and really establish that monitoring and logistics capability uh, on behalf of their customers, of course, getting paid for it. Uh, and I think Hylion will benefit to the bottom line for initiating this robust monitoring process um, and, and really kind of integrating with their customers in the manner that I think they want to anyway. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna closely be monitoring throughout 2022 when this is gonna happen, how this is gonna happen. I don't know but I have a feeling that this is gonna play a critical part in partially writing the success of the Hylion story going forward, okay? It's the technology piece of this company that it doesn't get a lot of credit for a lot of the time. I even sometimes make the error in thinking about this as strictly an industrial company. And I think that's an error in doing so. I, I, I really think that there's more to the story than this and it'd be fun to see how they roll that out. Um, number three, going into 2022, this is the big one. I mean, the Hypertruck ERX verification process. I, I can't really justify why it is that certain phases of the verification process couldn't have happened sooner. I know that there's shareholders out there. I'm one of them that are um, uh, fried for patients. Um, they're done. The patients are gone. They're, they're gone. And Hylion as a company is easy to invest in. The problem is to be able to invest in Hylion company, um, you got to invest in Hylion stock, which is absolutely a train wreck. Um, it's horrible. It, there, there's really, if Hylion is going to do half of the things that we talk about um, in their potential in meeting some 
of their goals, whether it be 50% of their goals, whether it be 25%, whether or not they blow the goals out of the water. In any of those situations, the stock price should not be trading at $6.50. There's just no way in hell. Um, there are companies on the pink sheets that get the favor all the time. There are companies uh, in the major markets, uh, New York Stock Exchange, um, the NASDAQ and alike that get uh, all the favor um, with regard to um, where they could potentially go into the future and uh, having to pay a healthy premium uh, to pay into some of those com companies. I mean, NVIDIA trades at 100 times earnings. Um, many of the companies are trading in triple digit PEs um, right now with the promise that those businesses are just going to continue to rip, rip out um, those earnings and, and drive those uh, catastrophic multiples for the company. Right now, Hylion is trading at just about uh, one and a half times cash. And that, that to me is, is, is extremely, extremely discounted. If you just want to give them credit for the, the cash, which this is the stock market, guys. Companies don't get valued in that, in that manner, okay? Nobody gets just valued by the cash they have on the, on the hands. We'd be talking about a three dollar and fifty cent stock. What what is the difference really between six and three fifty? Honestly, I mean, this thing has come from fifty eight all the way down sub ten, um, three fifty. I guess that would make the talking heads happy um, if it would just um, valued at cash and the rest of the business. Everything that I've just discussed with regard to twenty twenty one. Uh, announcements that were discounted in um, the face of the market will will not be given any type of credit at all. In, in other words, the BMS system is no good. The board of directors is non-existent. The executive management, there is no value. Um, the expertise, expertise of the team is non-existent. The EX hybrid doesn't work. The Hypertruck ERX doesn't work. Um, the, the BEV and ZEV credits, they, they don't, none of those are non-existent. You, you see what I mean? I mean? Cash is cash. It's the only thing tang tangible within a business. But there's going to be a catalyst where all of this pedigree that's put into the Hylion project uh, as, as it goes toward this commercialization, there's going to be a realization that, hey, Maybe some of this stuff does work, and maybe there is a pent-up demand on behalf of industry to actually start to drive a quantifiable metric when we're talking about highly on holdings, uh, e even into as early as 2022. Okay, but the hypertruck validation process needs to continue in whatever capacity. I know it's difficult by their admission. I guess it's impossible um, orders for the um, um, hypertruck ERX. Um, uh, demo models um, have been delivered. If those were the, the demo models that were delivered, well, then that forexes their ability to kind of show and tell to the fleet and really show them um, what it's all about. Um, my, my charge to Hylion is stop accommodating to sell side analysts. I, I, I don't understand that. You don't need to bring them down to Austin to show them. Those, those folks, you advertise them on your website as well. It pisses me off. I don't understand it one bit. You don't need to show what analysts are covering your company. I think you're doing that. So one day you can say, see, I told you so. These, these folks were sell side now, and now they're strong buy, conviction buy for the uh, foreseeable future. But you don't need to try to sell them right now. Their conviction is not going to change. They have basically put the charge to you to say, look, we have a sell rating on the stock. And unless Hylion can sell product, um, they're, they're, they're not going to get any higher of a valuation than what they are at right now. And that is a $1 billion company. That's it. So you don't need to try to sell them. I heard there was a small snippet that there was a sell side analyst um, that, that got the royal treatment down there and got to ride in the Hypertruck ERX. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not cool with that at all. Um, you know, the, the real champions of Hylion are the bag holders in the retail community that did not get sweetheart deals at the, uh, at the onset of this, um, this thing coming to a SPAC and coming to public markets. As a matter of fact, anybody who has invested in this company 100% across the board has not made money. Um, and that, 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 that is an embarrassing statistic. And, and I think a lot of it is, is because of a lot of the negative sentiment that has been uh, derived 
um, in the open marketplace for your inability to, um, to, to deliver product in a way that the uh, market expected it to be, to be delivered. And if you can't do that, no problem. You just don't have to, you, we don't have to cater uh, to sell side analysts and bring them down. Verify the hyper truck ERX, get it ready for sale, get it through um, all of the uh, internal verification that you need and the rest will fall into place. Uh, number four, going into 2022, something that I'm going to monitor is to continue to ramp up that backlog. Um, I've put a nice round number of 10,000. Why not have a backlog of 10,000 going into 2023 when you're anticipating being able to roll out um, the initial hyper truck ERXs to the fleets and put them into, um, into service? Um, wouldn't that be lovely? Um, whether or not they've taken their foot off the throttle, whether or not the sales department is 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 chomping at the bit is is only only speculation on my part. But that there is only one answer, as far as I'm concerned, is putting the aggressive press um, on making sure that they're doing everything they can do to not only fortify the backlog of uncommitted orders but to follow through with those uncommitted orders and make sure that none of those companies wanna go ahead and jump in line with an LOI for 10 hyper truck ERXs. And, and, and I, I know there's companies out there that would probably be willing to do that even in an unverified state. Thomas Healy speaks all the time about industry having to have it validated. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They were good enough to pony up a thousand uh, hyper truck ERX orders from Agility, A and G. I think they're ready to go. I, I think if they're willing to put 250 of an unreserved out there to the public markets and let people know that they were willing to walk side by side in this solution with Hylion, I don't think it's too much as an innovation council to, to go ahead and solidify 10 or 15 uh, hyper truck ERXs and really start the ball rolling um, on that second phase okay, you've got 250 of, of res reservations, but how many are we looking to take delivery of in year one? Is it five? Is it 10? Uh, is it 12? You know, there's got to be a number on it. So to get those LOIs in place to make sure that, hey, that relationship with A&G is continuing to be fortified. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the anticipated long-term plan. Here's the total overall fleet with A&G. Here's why we're doing 12. We expect to ramp it up to 15 the next year. We expect to ramp it up to 20 and 50 and so on. So we can fill out that order uh, reservation book. And that order of reservation book doesn't have to be set. Um, it can be 250 now in the onset only to be expanded upon as those orders are delivered and checked off, then they can uh, expand and making sure that they're electrifying the fleet in a strategic manner, in a manner that the fleets want um, to, to introduce that electrification to their specific fleets. So to continue the backlog is big in 2022. Um, number five in 2022, I'd like to see a, uh, an improved stock performance. Um, I've got a price target at $24. I don't think that that's too far fetched. I don't. Um, I would be the only one, that's certainly uh, a laughing stock, no doubt about it. And that's fine too. Um, laugh it up. It's no big deal, man. That's what makes me independent. See, I don't have to answer to somebody that's um, paying me to somehow put a token $5 price target on there uh, on a company that receives an awful lot of scrutiny for a company that by that token is um, said to be probably going out of business and not existing. Not to mention that if Hylion actually succeeds, it's gonna be better for the planet. So I'm not really sure I understand the motives of some of these folks, uh, other than the fact that my presumptions that I've continued to um, call out in 2021, and I'll continue to do that into 2022. Um, I'm the only one, I'm the only analyst out there See, that's the thing is I don't put a whole lot of value in the word analyst. I don't put a whole lot of value in the word fiduciary. I don't put a whole lot of uh, a value in financial planner specialist. I don't put a lot of value in any of that crap because a lot of it pays credence to people who have motives not in the best interest of the people that they serve. In other words, who does that benefit? When the stock is trading at $7 and somebody comes out and says, I'm coming out with a brand new bearish price target on the company and I'm putting it at $5. Now I've said this many times, had you done that and the stock was trading at 20 and you put a $5 price target, now you've got my attention. But nobody has the ability to do that. Furthermore, nobody does that without any type of objective. And the irony in the whole thing in 2021 is that big 
companies, big institutions were accumulating shares of highly on holdings. It's just that simple. They accumulated shares in 2021, uh, even as uh, specific as the uh, the executives uh, at highly on the upper management, Sherry Baker specifically, uh, uh, Robert Knight as well, accumulating large positions uh, with internal buys. So where is the conviction? Is it to the sell side? And, and that was some of the scrutiny that I also offered in 2021. But something I'm going to be monitoring here closely, and I, I don't care. I don't care if we close 2022 at a stock price of, 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 of $12, $11, anything above 10, 15, 17. Um, if it blows my target out of the water, which it absolutely could do with the right catalyst, $24 is my price target. Um, before it reaches there, when it gets to 12, I'll adjust mine. I'll adjust mine up to 42 because this thing is going to 100 eventually. It's going to 100. And so it's it's really simple. And all the analysts, they'll, they'll follow suit as well when it's convenient for them to do so. And they have the greatest percentage of being right. And they can conveniently put that out there for the benefit of people when the, when the tide has changed and the momentum has changed on the stock. But in 2022, the stock performance at Hylion has to improve. And I earmark this all the time. They have to drive shareholder value. Um, they're driving shareholder value in the wrong direction. It went in the wrong direction for the entirety of 2021. In 2022, they cannot continue to do that and expect to navigate and have any type of investor confidence going into these years of 2023 and 2024. I'm not saying it needs to be roses. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they need to do everything and I'm talking everything in their power to try to really put this out there and let investors understand that yes, they in fact believe in the solution in what they're doing at the roadmap that they've paved going forward as a strategic direction to shareholders to instill that confidence in the shareholder base. And a lot of people might be thinking, no, nah, they're doing everything they need to do, Ryan. You don't have a right to know. You don't have a right to scrutinize bullshit. If the company wants to go private, they can go private, no problem. This is a publicly traded company, and they are absolutely, absolutely at the whim and scrutiny of investors in this company. The investors own this company, okay? There are institutions that own this company, and there are, there are executives all the way up to the top, Mr. Thomas Healy, the CEO of the company. We own, all own a piece of the company, okay? The shares dictate the level of... Um, of, 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 of opinion, of um, strategic direction that you may have at the company, yes. But shareholders have a place in the company as well. If you don't like that arrangement, then go private. It's just that simple. But as a publicly traded company, there has to be demanded answers. And those answers have to be provided to satisfy the strategic direction of where this company is going and driving shareholder value, something I'm going to be monitoring in 2022. Um, Number six, you know, in 2022, they've mentioned the path to um, hydrogen fuel cell um, going um, uh, fuel agnostic, which means I guess you can go, go with both. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more on this. Uh, it seemed like 2021, I would give the nod to Nikola as far as eating highly on lunch. Now, all of the EVs got crushed. Um, Hyzon and Nikola seemed to do a better job of selling their story, and it all seemed to surround what was the more acceptable story uh, through hydrogen fuel cell. Now, if the solution is as good as they say it is, and all it requires is just supplementing the RNG with the hydrogen fuel cell to fuel the solution on Hylion, this should be a slam dunk. And, and I, I don't know why they don't start flying the flag of, of hydrogen fuel cell right now. Change, 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 change this leaf. I'm going to point in the right direction. Change this leaf to blue. I, I don't know what else to say because seemingly, and this is just my impression, is that the, the RNG that is, um, that is put out there as a solution for Hylion is one that is not necessarily in the most of favor, uh, in my opinion. And it seems like everything that is mentioned with hydrogen fuel cell gets the nod. It's more expensive than diesel. There is no current infrastructure in place to actually put this, um, this thing in play. 
and and that's the misery of it is watching Hylion with a, a more uh, applicable solution right now um, is actually getting the um, the disfavor in the market, which I think is really really a disconnect. But um, I'm not the one who makes the rules; the open stock market does. All right. Um, number seven, EPA certification uh, needs to be met. Uh, needs to be uh, obtained from the Hypertruck ERX. That's going to be fun. Once that gets done and put in place, uh, then it can be sold as a product to these, these fleets, knowing that it meets all the rigors of the um, Environmental Protection Agency. Very cool. Um, I don't see any of the other EV companies talking about any of this. I guess they're not subject to said scrutiny or they've already made it through certification. I don't know because they don't say anything about it. Evidently, Hylion has mentioned this at least on the last Q3 uh, earnings call and the transcript as well doubled down on the importance of achieving this over the road certification. And, and I, I have to agree, they're the experts in the field, um, but uh, to gaining all of those approvals, um, whether it be certif engineering certifications. Um, and I think this is maybe where FEV has helped out immensely um, in the highly on story is the EPA certification be something that I, um, I'm listening for in 2022. I don't expect it until latter 2022, if at all, but it will be something that has been previously mentioned and therefore is an open action item. Um, and once we receive closure on that, it'll just be another uh, checkbox that's um, uh, on the way to mass scale up, which is where we need to go. The last and final thing I'll mention into 2022 is OEM integration. Um, this is something that I talk about all the time. And, and, and it, let me break it down to you really, really simple. Um, Hylion is not going to be able to produce a thousand or 2,000 uh, units sold per year and expect to do anything other than keep the lights on. That's it. Okay. Um, for this company to make it, they need to partner with OEMs. Um, to my knowledge, they have partners with one. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that there are relationships that are uh, pending. Um, I hope there's um, robust discussions with Volvo Penta, um, with Mac, um, with Freightliner, all of them. Um, because if they cannot win those OEMs that represent their respected fleets and customers and have been solidified for, for decades, um, this story remains a, a, a story of um, providing electrified solutions, but not being a leader uh, by any means. Um, providing uh, solutions and limping by um, as a three or four billion dollar company, and that is it. If they cannot produce orders in the upwards of 10 to 15,000, and that is to get them to a respectable mark. Respectable, doable, absolutely. Once this company gets it nailed down in the US, let's just say that the US market is capable of contributing to the bottom line, uh, five to 7,500 of those um, initial Hypertruck ERX orders, right? Uh, represented across all OEMs and it will absolutely Peterbilt cannot do it all. They can't. It has to be a representative sample of each of the OEMs producing X number of units per year for the respective customers. Um, but to get the stock respectable, that's the bare minimum that's going to be required. And we're not there. There's been no talk at all about how the OEM hubs are going to be utilized to integrate. Um, are the OEMs willing to actually take them on? Um, for, for, for what? Uh, uh, the benefit of offering the solution to their customers? I don't know what the incentive is there for the OEMs. I don't know, because it hasn't been discussed. And I think through 2022, I think it's a, a, just as good a time as any to really start to, to, to put the crimp down. If the idea is to deliver to customers first and then allow those customers to put the pressure on the OEMs, I like that strategy. I do because then it's, there's not gonna be any selling that's necessary. It's gonna be like, hey, we prefer Mac or we prefer, you know, Peterbilt will be easy, it's already there, but Freightliner, we prefer Freightliner and we want 10 of these uh, highly on Hypertruck ERX solutions to be um, honored. How can you make that happen for us? Well, we can't. Okay, then we'll switch OEMs and go to Peterbilt that can because it's that good of a solution. Okay, hold on, time out, wait a second we'll go ahead and oblige your request. That's going to be the domino effect 
that's really going to help with the um, the OEM manufacturers um, and the mass integration that I think that needs to happen. When I say mass integration, when it gets to 5,000 to 7,500 units per year, which is half, half of what the projections were um, on the original investor presentation uh, for 2023 and then for 2024, I think they need to do at, at least 15,000, uh, perhaps maybe even 25 to 30,000 units. And that's where the global scale, uh, which is where the 800 billion to $1 trillion addressable market comes from in the first place. Um, if they can't turn out 15,000 to 20 to 30,000 units, um, th this stock is not going to be a 10 to $15 billion company. It's going to remain a $1 to $3 billion company, um, piecing together hybrid ERXs at 5 to 10 a clip, uh, and maybe potentially doing 40, 50, 100, 500 ERX orders per year. That's it. Unless they can mass scale up, we are not talking about a, a company that's going to revolutionize class A trucking. We are not talking about a company that's going to be a leading powertrain solution in the class eight space. We are not talking about that. We are talking about larger than an arts and crafts project that has went to public markets on a lot of SPAC dollars raised through the issuance of warrants and stock sales to come to public markets uh, to provide a, 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 a solution that works on a very, very small scale. So unless we can take this solution and mass scale up, um, the, the, the dream and vision of, of seeing Hylion uh, solution on the road, which can happen with proper execution, it absolutely can happen. But the, the clear catalyst for me is any type of progress uh, that's being made and it just has to happen. The pillars have to fall. We have to see some news releases and some uh, some progress being made, and those things can be happening right now. There, there's no there's no need to wait until the Hypertruck ERX is perfect and ready to roll out in 2023. All of those relationships can be solidified right now, and I think that's where the Hypertruck ERX demo models play an extremely important role in giving the Innovation Council enough taste of the potential within their fleets to help bridge the gap toward those mass orders. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in, not only uh, to this video, but throughout the totality of 2021. Do my very best, absolutely. A um, lot of self-study on my part to be able to talk off the cuff on highly on holdings, easy company to invest in. Um, stock, downright difficult. Hoping things improve into 2022. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Definitely leave your comments, man. If I've missed something on expectations going into 2022, leave those comments in the comment section, man. Love to strike up a dialogue on this video, these videos. It's a lot of fun to cover this company. Remember, we are ground floor investors on a company that I do believe can revolutionize the class eight space in electrifying the uh, powertrains for many of these companies in the shift from a diesel era uh, into more of an electrified um, uh, fuel agnostic and even hydrogen fuel cell future um, or RNG, whatever it is that the fleets need as far as their solution goes to transport goods um, in this country and abroad. Um, Hylion absolutely has that solution and it'll be fun to actually monitor the progress going forward. Uh, so if you know anybody that's interested in the topic, bring them onto the channel, man. Tune them on. Appreciate you guys tuning in uh, to the message. And as always, good luck in your investment future.